the season of face scatter terrain. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of The Gamesmith. In today's episode, we're going to be turning holiday decorations into face scatter terrain for fantasy games like this. We can also use those exact same plants in science fiction games like this. And it all starts with a trip to the dollar store. It's the Christmas season and the dollar stores are filled with decorations and wrapping accessories like bows, ribbons, bells, and baubles. Rather than seeing these inexpensive items for what they are, we as crafters can look at things not necessarily as they are, but for what they might be. As a crafter, how many times have you looked at a mundane object, like these bows for example, and didn't see a bow? The various holiday seasons are a great time to gather and use found objects and repurpose them. Perhaps you saw an animal, or a plant of some kind, or an explosion marker, or a spell effect. To me, all these colorful decorations appear to be bizarre plants from the First World or Feywild. The world of the fairies, magical realms, or even alien worlds like those that populate science fiction games like Star Wars or Warhammer. Now we're going to make some alien or fey scatter terrain with those same decorations. However, we're going to do things a bit different in this video. We have done a lot of building over the last 70 or so videos that have largely focused on the product versus the process of building scattered terrain for your tabletop games. In fact, tutorial videos by their very nature are product videos. What I mean by that is this. Product videos focus on a project when we know what the end product should look like. We follow a set of instructions to reach the final product. Of course we are free to make changes or modify the instructions to suit our own experience and the tools or materials we have available. But the viewer's final result should look similar to the final product in the video. In this video I want to shift our focus to the process instead. That is to say, I want to share with you several ideas about the process of reaching that final product, regardless of whatever the project is. It is through process that we actually express ourselves by experimenting and discovering our own creativity. I want to suggest four ideas to help with the crafting process, to help elevate your tabletop creativity. As I've mentioned before, the secret to being a good tabletop crafter is seeing things not necessarily as they are, but for what they might be. I think that the first step in the process of crafting for the tabletop is learning to recognize and be open to inspiration wherever you find it. Artists of every kind, whether they're painters, sculptors, writers, poets, musicians, and every other creative type person, need to be open to inspiration. Should tabletop crafters be any different? I don't think so. I go to the dollar store or thrift stores and just walk up and down the aisles. Not only the crafting and seasonal aisles, but also the hardware, beauty aids, toys, stationery, and obviously the floral section too. Very often I don't know what I'm looking for, but when I find something inspirational, I sometimes get what my friends call the crafter's stare. I'll pick up an object and disappear into my imagination thinking of ways I can use the object as it is, or how I can change it, or use it as part of a larger project, and I tune out the world around me for a minute or two. I've seriously thought about how this happens for quite some time, and I've narrowed it down to a few things that I can suggest. First, I have to be open to new ideas, trying new things, and open to novelty. I can get caught up in the notion that a simple glass marble is just a marble, but by being open to new ideas, I can ask questions about the marble and what I can also turn the marble into. A new kind of rock? A plant? A mold or fungus? I don't have to limit myself to reality-based understanding. Like we're going to use these bows and decorative plants in this video. Next, I also think it's important not to see our hobby as a competition. There is always going to be someone who has more skill, better tools, the right materials, or more resources than I do. As a result, I don't engage with the notion that I'm in competition with other crafters. I look at what other crafters are doing as a source of inspiration for my own creativity and imagination. Rather than looking at the amazing terrain other YouTube crafters produce as a barrier, I see their projects as something new to try or something I can put my own creative spin on. 
Not only is it okay to use other people's ideas as a source of inspiration, but I also think it's absolutely vital. There are thousands of videos produced by creative people whose projects can be fuel for your imagination engine. Other media like Pinterest are also great sources of inspiration, especially when it comes to using found objects and materials. After all, the whole reason why I'm making tabletop terrain is to enhance my player's gaming experience and not stress myself out. Another important idea is to consider that inspiration favors the prepared mind. I've often found that my imagination engine doesn't run very well when I'm tired, stressed, distracted, or rushed. However, the reverse is also true. I'm more likely to have a creative flash of inspiration when I'm alert, calm, focused, and relaxed. When I have an undeveloped idea, sometimes I just write a few words on a post-it note. I can be suddenly inspired by that little notion because I wasn't really thinking about it. My mind is prepared to receive new ideas because I'm not focusing on anything. When I'm looking forward to a game session or when I have a plan to work on some project, I'm much more likely to be inspired by some sudden insight. Also, when I have an idea for terrain, I look for videos on the same topic and watch as many of them as I can find. But there are also blogs, vlogs, Patreon pages, Reddit pages, and websites that have loads of inspiration too. Now think about this for a moment. It's not just what other people are doing that's inspirational, it's also what they're not doing. I have found much inspiration for a tutorial video on the Gamesmith channel based upon the absence of information about a specific kind of terrain. Just about our entire water tile series was inspired by the lack of information that I could find on the subject. Next, I've noticed that I'm really curious and I like finding out new things. I enjoy looking through 50 different things to find that one item that inspires me to create something with it. I like to document everything, taking pictures, bookmarking websites, and even recording ideas on my phone. Document what inspires you. I have a scrapbook full of post-it notes, which are just ramblings of a tabletop crafter holding on to every morsel of an idea. I like to collect knickknacks, pick up mundane objects, and seek out the possibilities that emerge from just staring at them. I collect the pointed caps off all the glue bottles that I've been using on the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to use them for yet, but I brainstorm ideas so I can explore new ways to use them later on. I'm also a creature of habit, and I'm calmed by routine, but I also enjoy seeking out new surroundings and getting a new and different outlook that breaks me out of my habits. I also think it's important as a creative person to abandon what we've already finished or accomplished. When I've finished a project, I have to put it on the shelf and forget about it until I need it for a game session. I don't want to keep reinventing the wheel or get stuck in the trap of repeating ideas. This Fey Terrain video, for example, reminds me very much of our Aquatic Bases for Plants video from Series 3. I always want to keep innovating and moving forward so that I'm in a state of creative renewal. If you've stayed this long, I have a bonus idea for you, which is simply this. Know your tools! Crafting of any kind is not just about having the right tools for the job. It's also about using those tools most efficiently to get the results you want. We often keep in mind there is probably always a better way to complete a project. But just like I'm always looking for inspiration for a new craft, I'm also aware that I need to keep exploring new materials and practicing with the tools that I have. If you don't have the means to get the supplies you need, simply make do with what you have. I once used band-aids to join two objects together because I ran out of tape. We don't always have the optimum tool or supplies to complete the project the way we want, but that shouldn't mean we abandon the attempt. I frequently receive suggestions from the crafting community on how to improve a build, and I'm always happy when I'm inspired by other people's suggestions. It's important to remember that someone will always build a better mousetrap. They might have more skill, better tools, more money, a more abundant imagination. But it's also important to remember that it's inevitable that you'll improve your skills as a tabletop crafter with whatever tools and materials you have. Part of the challenge of being open to inspiration is that we often only see the final result of a project and not the start. In other words, we know what we want the final product to be, but we really don't know what steps to take in order to achieve that final product. Ever had to write something for work or school and you simply stare at a blank page or screen for what seems like forever? The same thing can happen to your tabletop crafting hobby. Don't get bogged down in the process any more than you should be discouraged from seeking out the best product you can produce. I think that people in general tend to romanticize talent and natural ability, but any artist will tell you that great works are the result of a vast amount of work and dedication to practicing, improving, and being open to inspiration.
The result of visiting a few dollar stores and being open to inspiration has produced these great fey or alien plants. We did our best to make sure these objects had a vaguely alien appearance, but they could still be recognized as a type of plant. Even the rocks have a distinctly magical or extraterrestrial feel about them. These terrain pieces will work terrific in the Star Wars RPG campaign that I'm running. It's remarkable how simply changing the color palette on the ground, rocks, and plants creates a distinctly alien appearance. If you enjoyed this video, please check out some of our other ones. And if you'd like to support us here at The Gamesmith, there's a number of ways you could do that. If you haven't already subscribed, now is a great time. Hit the thumbs up button and give us a like. Ask a question or leave a comment below. Check out our website at thegamesmith.org. Read our free monthly blog and listen to our podcast. Finally, you can join Patreon, which gives you access to content like our podcasts and exclusive videos. Your support in any form is much appreciated. Until next time, I'll see you at the table.